Young Chop helped create the Chicago drill sound that took over the entire industry and changed rap forever. But then he allegedly lost his mind, started getting into shootouts, and destroyed his whole career. And today we're breaking down the crazy downfall. Chop came up on the south side of Chicago and started producing when he was just 11 years old. One of his cousins introduced him to a beat making software called FL Studio, and Chop just dove straight into it. Most rap fans know that Chicago changed everything in the early 2010s and rappers from everywhere else started copying their style. But before Chop and Chief Keef blew up, the city didn't really have a big hip hop scene. There was always the East and West Coast sounds, then the South started popping off with dudes like Gucci Mane. But Chicago didn't have much influence besides a few big artists like Kanye. That all changed when Young Chop and Chief Keef started linking up in the studio though. Back then, Chop had to carry around a massive desktop computer when he wanted to work with someone he didn't have any kind of professional equipment. He wasn't cooking up beats in a million dollar studio, but that didn't stop him from kicking off a whole new wave in the industry. Chop met Keith through his homie E-Day, and they linked up the first time for Keith's mixtape, Bang. Bang and Keith's other tape called The Glory Road had Chop's name buzzing in the city. But before he could take it further, Chop got booked for letting off shots from his car. Keith already knew that Chop had potential, and he hit him up immediately after he got out of jail. Chop said he got a message on Facebook from Keith. And after he got out of school that afternoon, he brought his computer over and they cooked up the track 300 in one day. Sosa had some momentum in Chicago already, but 300 is what made everyone start paying attention. The track popped off and there was nothing else like it. The video was just Keith and a bunch of his homies rapping where they really came from, and Chop's production took it to the next level. 300 had Chop and Sosa on the come up, but what they dropped next sent a shockwave through the whole industry. In March 2011, Young Chop and Chief Keef released I Don't Like. 300 was successful, but nobody expected I Don't Like to blow up like it did. They racked up over a million views on YouTube in no time and put Chicago Drill on the map. They was already popping off, but then Kanye, Pusha T, Big Sean, and Jadakiss hop on the remix and ran up even crazier numbers. Having one of the biggest artists in the world remix your beat is a dream for most producers, but Young Chop wasn't rocking with how it all went down. Chop's original beat had his own style, but the remix sounded completely different. Obviously, the fans liked it because it blew up and turned Keith into a star, but Chop told XXL that he felt disrespected over the situation. According to him, he asked to hear the remix before it dropped, but the first time he heard it was on the radio. He also said that Kanye changed up the beat without asking him and told XXL, I'm hearing the song and there's different sounds in the beat. It don't even sound like the real beat. It sounded like a rock star beat, and that's not how I do it. That's not my sound. Chop never even talked to Kanye because he had to go through a lot of people just to reach him. He was actually in the studio when Big Sean was laying down his verse, but he recorded using his original beat, so Chop had no idea the changes were coming. There were rumors that Chop was actually going to sue Kanye over the track, but a few days later, he said that Ye reached out and everything was cool. In 2013, they even linked up in the studio while Kanye was working on his Yeezus album, and Chop told DJ Vlad, I sat down with him and shit, like bro really motherfucking talented. The shit is just genius work. That wasn't the end of the drama though. In 2015, Chop told DJ Booth, Niggas don't even know the story behind that. He came to get beats for me. Chop and Chief Keef already had millions of views before Ye Remix don't like. And Chop said, Yeah, he wanted beats. And he wanted that sound. You see what I'm saying? He was taken taking from us. You feel what I'm saying? In another video from 2015, Chop said, Kanye don't make it no better. You feel me? He be right, he right along with the shits. Use you, try to soak, you know, soak up everything. Niggas know, get you the right songs for him, you know, and then don't call you after that. Beefing with a superstar like Ye usually won't help your career, but 2016 is when Chop's downfall really started. Chop had always been close with his mom and grandmother. He never had a driver's license, even after he started making money in the rap game. So his mom still drove him around most of the time. They would travel together when he was on the road, doing interviews and everything else. And in 2016, she tragically passed away just one year after Chop lost his grandmother. 2016 wasn't all bad though. Chop and Sosa had some tension for a couple years and hadn't been working together. But that year, Sosa called him up and they started making music again. Squashing the beef with Sosa was a great move for Chop, but then he sparked a way more serious issue that almost got him killed. 2020 was a wild year for Chop. In February of that year, he was booked in jail for allegedly starving a dog to death. And then he started beefing with 21 Savage out of nowhere. During an IG live session, Gilly the Kid asked Young Chop, Who the scariest tough guy is? The scariest tough guy? Yeah, nigga who be betraying like he a real street nigga, but he's scary as fuck. 21 Savage. <laughs> in my book. In the Migos. I like Lil Baby. He be beating motherfuckers up. According to Chop, I was in the studio with him and me. Niggas ain't living like that. 
I had that big ass that you dig on me. <laughs> they just left the, <laughs> left the studio. Swear to God. During the live session, it seemed like Gilly knew Chop was losing it. And after it went down, me cop on Twitter and said, it's obvious Chop having some mental issues. Y'all be gassing stuff so much, y'all just gonna ignore it. I've been getting beats from him for years. Hope he get well. Meek was really trying to look out for him, but Chop clapped back on Twitter and said Meek was mad because he hooked up with his girl. Then in another live session, he called out 21 Savage again and said they can meet up anytime because they live in the same area. And 21, we live in the same area. Tell the people that we live in the same fucking area, nigga. We go to the same Walmart, nigga. What's up, nigga? Let the people know that. Chop also dropped a diss track aimed at 21 and said, Big dog status, you can label me. If a nigga talk down, I'ma send this bitch up. Six shots to his motherfucking head, one shot to his motherfucking leg. 21 responded by posting a picture of Chop on his IG story with the caption, make sure y'all go get his tape when it drops cause he need the clout and pray for him cause he done lost his mind. That's when Chop took the beef to another level and tried to hunt 21 down in his hood. Chop went live on IG while he was sliding into 21's area in the back of an Uber. According to Chop, someone pulls up on him and shot out the Uber's window. And Chop told him they need to hire more shooters because they didn't even scratch him. At that point, everyone knew Chop was wild. And the next day, he got booked for reckless conduct. According to the arrest report, the Uber driver told the cops that Chop hopped out of the whip and started asking people where 21 Savage was. At some point, he got into an argument with a random dude and pulled out his strap. Then he got back in the car and they drove off. That's when another whip started following them, so Chop allegedly showed him his gun again and they started letting off shots. Chop wanted the Uber driver to follow the other car after it sped off, but they couldn't catch up. Around the same time all of this was going down, young Chop posted a video of himself letting off a shot at some people outside of his crib. Rumors said he accidentally leaked his own address by showing off his Uber destination on IG Live, so some ops allegedly parked outside and Chop took a shot at them. A week after Chop got arrested, he allegedly took another shot at 21 with the track You Know What We Do and rapped, Slide Through Your Block, I'm Looking For The People, Them Choppers On Deck, You Know What We Do. Everyone Chop was trying to spark an issue with realized he had lost it, and eventually the situation cooled off. In 2021, he took another shot at Kanye and called him a rat, but then he suffered another loss and hasn't been active on social media since. In April 2022, Chop's brother Johnny Maycash was killed by his girlfriend after he brutally beat her. A video of him attacking her came out a few months before, but that wasn't the first or last time he put hands on her. Johnny had other domestic violence charges from different women, and an assistant public defender said that his girlfriend shooting him was clearly self-defense. Young Chop was allegedly arrested for violating probation in the same month, and reports say he's still behind bars right now. Back in 2011, it looked like Chop was going to be on the same level of Kanye and Pharrell when it came to superstar producers. He changed the game with his drill beats and helped make Chicago one of the biggest rap cities in the world. But unfortunately, he went down a crazy path and ended up destroying everything. Hopefully he can turn it all around and keep dropping bangers, cause it's clear young Chop has the talent to make it to the top.